if Rob Slavery wants to end, uh, welcome to a Pick Up 59 video, where this video is Pick Up 59 and my experience at the Atlanta Comic Con, which I went to today, which was awesome. I'll talk more about that experience, but, oh, I got a Halloween shirt from the original from John Carpenter's Halloween. This is the this is the, uh, the shirt from the original film. Not my favorite Halloween movie, but like I said, this is a Pick Up 59 video and talking about my experience at the Atlanta Comic Con. Sorry guys, I haven't done videos in a while, it's just been busy with work. The last time it was a tribute video for Carl Weathers, you know, which, who, he sadly passed away. But hey, what, you know, sucks. I'm only drinking some Sprite Zero Sugar for a change. And thanks for the two more subs, 419 subs. Good guys, please keep on subscribing. Because I'm not quitting YouTube guys. Like I said, if you just don't see me do videos, it's because I've been busy with work. I may not do a review tomorrow. Maybe. The Rocketeer is still the next review. But anyway, this is, these are the movies I'm going to show off. In this bag. And here, these are the autographs I got and the people I met. And I will show pictures too. I'm just plugging my phone up right now. So, with the video getting started, I'll start, I'm going to start with the pickup first. This would be pickup 59. 59. Yeah. I'm going to start with the pickup first in the video. I'll pick up 59 first, okay? See? Eight movies. So, this video might be a little long, but it's definitely worth being long. Trust me, it is. Alright, let's get started. Hope you guys can see me and hear me. Hope the audio is working. I know my quality isn't the best, guys, but hopefully one day I'll get a better webcam here. I'm going to keep trying, but I'm not giving up on that. So, just bear with me if you can. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, I'll get them out of the way. Alright, turn on the so enjoy the video, guys. Alright, and I got this movie. The, this movie that I bought because uh, from, well, from Christmas, but I did save the other part of the money for Comic, for Comic Con, sorry. Yeah. But I bought these movies. Usually, like, after Christmas, I'll get some money or whatever, and I'll buy some movies for Christmas. I just like doing that every year. Just kind of like late Christmas pickups, if you will. But anyway, I got the sequel. Speaking of Halloween, I got Halloween 2. Love this sequel, really good. Probably my favorite Halloween film. Yeah. Uh, I've seen. I've only seen. Let's see, 6 I've seen, which I thought was alright. Resurrection I thought sucked. H2 I liked. Yeah, I got all three of those films together. I haven't seen the Robin Williams ones. I haven't seen the third film, but I know Michael was not in that movie. But he's in the fourth and fifth one. I haven't. I've never seen those. I've only seen the six. Uh, a super resurrection films, and the original Halloween, of course. So, yeah. But that's Halloween too. This is a collector's edition of the film. You get some special features. The making of Halloween too a little bit. The movie interviews with the director. Dick, you know, there's some people do well. I think played Michael Myers. Played Michael. Yeah, this is where Michael. You know, that scene where he gets shot in the face and he cuts his eyes. Yeah. Pictures. This is the, the disc for the movie, I guess, from Screen Factory, and I guess disc two, whatever. Yeah. The television version of the film, I guess, different version, which I've never seen. But of course, the movie's about it takes place after the first film, where Lori's in the hospital after being attacked by Michael Myers, and he goes to the hospital to kill her. Because remember, spoiler alert, she's his brother, and he's trying to murder his own family. So that's what he's trying to do to her. But Halloween two, really great sequel. Love this movie. Really good. Oh, I saw the new movies too. The 2018 film and uh, Halloween Kills and uh, Halloween Ends, which I thought sucked. Especially Halloween Ends. Halloween, the 2018 film, has some decent kills, but still not a good movie. Halloween Kills was just stupid. A lot of people don't do stupid things in that movie. Ridiculous bad movie. Halloween Ends wasn't even Michael. Michael Myers barely even does it. It's not even about him. He's barely in the movie, and that movie sucked. But yeah. The way I see it, the only good Halloween movies were the first two, were this one and the second one, and uh, I would say H.U.O. were the only good ones I liked, in my opinion. 
but that's all I mean too. Awesome sequel again. Directed by John Carpenter. Also does he also does the music for the film. But that's Halloween too. Excellent movie. Definitely recommend it if you're a fan of Halloween. But that's Halloween too. All right. And this movie just turned 20 this year. So it's Ben Stiller and Jennifer Gardner. And I love this movie. I think it's really gave me disgusting a little bit, but sometimes in his movies, you know, it can be disgusting. But that is. I'm not trying to jump my drink. But anyway, that is a long came Polly, which I love this movie. Really good. Hope that works. Makes me nervous if it doesn't work. Oh, okay. The DVD looks good. Because when they're selling these, this I got this place called FIE. Or FIU. Is at the mall of Georgia where I live close to. So, yeah. Get to make another movie a little bit. Do overs. Outtakes from delay scenes from the movie. Yeah. Yeah, Hank Azar is in here. <laughs> uh, he uh, was also with Ben Stiller and Night of the Museum 2, Battle of the Smithsonian, where he played the villain. Yeah. That's a fun movie, too, but this movie, I think, just turned 20 this year, so this is a good movie. That is Along King Polly with Ben Stiller and Jennifer Aniston. I definitely recommend it, but if you can handle disgusting stuff a little bit, sometimes every human act is gross a little bit, if you can handle it, it is an adorable film. And it's only 1 hour 31 minutes long. It's a short movie. Really good film, too. And they both have good chemistry, too. But Along Came Polly, really good movie, in my opinion. Definitely recommend it if you've never seen it. And this is a movie that was directed by, I believe, directed by the late Joel Schumacher, starring Colin Farrell. And I really remember liking this movie. And it's got Keith Sutherland in it and Forrest Whitaker. Really good movie, pretty underrated film. I remember really in, enjoying this kind of movie. I thought it was really good. I've only seen it once though, but I do remember really enjoying it. And I really just thought, <laughs> keep on saying that. And I really wanted to buy it. Keep on saying it again, really, really. Yeah, but anyway, that is Joshua Marker directed, the late Joshua Marker, you know, who directed A Time to Kill, I think, uh, damn. One of the fucking vampires, I forget. I don't look that shit up right now, but it's Phone Booth, yeah. Phone booth. Really good movie. I remember really enjoying this film. Katie Holmes is in it. <laughs> Two. But I remember enjoying Phone Booth. This was a good Colin Farrell flick. Yeah. But yeah. Phone Booth. Really good movie directed by like Joshua Marker. But that's Phone Booth. But I thought I forget that vampire movie that he that Joshua Marker directed. I think he directed Vampire. Please tell me in the comments down below. <laughs> if anybody knows it. But that's Phone Booth. Really good movie. Yeah, Phone Booth. Alright. And I bought this movie because I've never seen this movie. It's a superhero movie, but that's why I want to... Because I'm going to review this film. And that is Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. I heard it was bad. It came out in 1997. I heard this was terrible. Like, uh, for a lot of people that hate... I even though I like that on the and you have Steel and Spawn. Steel and Spawn sucked. And I'm going to presume this movie sucked too. If you're saying, well, what did you get? Well, it was like $3, and I thought, okay, I'm going to review this movie. That way I don't have to buy it on Prime Video. I can just go ahead and get it now, and if I think this movie is a piece of shit, I'll just put it in the, you know, I have a box where I can just get rid of it, or just put it in some more, a lot of Walmart bags and just take it away. Yeah, this film, yeah, it does not look good. But I'm reviewing it because it's also part of the 90s era of superhero reviews. It came out in 97. So that's why I'm buying it, because it came out that year. But that's terrible, a Power Rangers movie. If anybody's seen this movie, please tell me in the comments down below. Is it really terrible? I just gotta know <laughs> what I'm getting into. But I, I get that feeling, you know, with this movie. But that's Turbo Power Rangers movie. So I definitely, I do have a thumbnail plan to read, read for this. You know, a rant. But that's Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. Yeah. So stay tuned one day for a review for this, sometime this year. And I got this movie. This is a Nickelodeon movie. Kind of grew up with this show. I grew up with a lot of Nickelodeon shows. Like growing up, well, all growing up, of course, that came from Rugrats. From Rugrats, first Rugrats, Rocky Power, The Wild Thornberries, SpongeBob. Grew up watching all those, and that is Hey All the movie. I think I saw this in theaters. Yeah, I loved. I just had to get this movie. I thought I was like, I gotta get this. <laughs> I love Hey Arnold. Yeah, and then this movie being really good. I think I saw it in theaters, too. This is where Hellboy, you know, and Mr. Fillings, 
her really this girl who like really, you know, picks on him, but she really is in love with Arnold. <laughs> and I think she admits it in this movie. <laughs> and then denies it. It's just a little funny game going on between the two. But it, hey, Arnold, the movie is really good. It's got a good plot. Kind of about this industrialist man who wants to destroy, you know, this man here who wants to destroy his town, his homes that he lives in, and all his, you know, and his friend Gerald's going to, you know, stop him. Yeah, but hey, all of the movie, really fun movie, definitely nostalgia for me, you know. So, but that's hey, all the movie, I was real happy to get this, finally. I still need to get Spongebob the Square Man movie. I review Spongebob, and I review Robert Rex the movie. I need to review uh, this movie, of course, one day, and I also need to review Wild Thornberry's movie, which I do have. But that's Hey Arnold the movie. Yeah, it's coming out in 2002, so it's already past 20. But I remember really loving Hey Arnold the movie, so if you can't wait to watch this again. And then I'm reviewing this film because it'll be part of the Arnold reviews. Yeah, I don't like this movie, but if you ask why, I got the Total Recall remake. Because I'm going to, since I'm going to read some Arnold movies, I'm going to read the Terminator films, the sequels. And since I'm going to read, also going to read the Clone of the remake, and I'm figuring since I'm going to read Total Recall, the original story on first night, the only good Total Recall movie, why not just rant on the remake? Why not read the remake too? I just figured why not, you know, because it's part of the, and of course the Predator sequels, Predator Two, uh, Predators with Adrian Brody, and the Predator. So but that's Total Recall, the remake. Yeah. Do not look forward to watching this. I remember this movie not being really forgettable. Too many lens flares and, you know, too much bad CGI. I'm trying to copy Star Wars with the robots and stuff, you know. The drawers look better. In fact, it is. It was 25 this year, by the way, and that was like a better movie than that. Anyway, last movie. I really enjoyed this World Fair movie. Some people may not like it, but I remember really loving this film. I thought this was a fun movie. Fun, silly movie. About him, you know, going against dinosaurs with Danny McBride and Anna Farrell and that is Land of the Lost <laughs> yeah I like Wolf I love Ricky Bobby uh, somebody at Comic Con was just with Ricky Bobby actually I got a picture with him but I didn't but I love Ricky Bobby I love Seth Brothers I love Elf you know really good movies he's done Land of the Lost is really good really funny hilarious movie <laughs> definitely one of my favorites from him yeah but that's Land of the Lost Yeah, feature commentary with the director, Day in the Life, a big time movie star, Danny McBride, hilarious deleted scenes. <laughs> the Land Lost, this is a really funny movie. Alright, guys, that was Pickups 59. Alright. So tell me in the comments down below if you've seen any of these movies at all. And if you have, tell me in the comments down below. I gotta look at that George Martin movie, she's killing me thinking about it now. But speaking of which, I'm going to go ahead and get my phone in here. Get this way from one back. I can't really. I have a lot of time plus. I have a room from down in the cabinet. And I don't have room from on the shelf right now. I know. There really good too many movies, I know. But that's why if I can watch some movies, I can review some and get rid of some. Yeah. It comes down to one day, I'll just make another movie show. Or buy one, if I have to. So now we're going to get to my experience at the Atlantic Comic Con. Before we do that, um, let me go get my phone. Be right back. Yep, sorry, I was just looking at pictures on Facebook. Okay. Speaking of Facebook, I'll go through the pictures too. 
Uh, but Comic Con was fun. Atlanta Comic Con, it, always, it just brings the nerd out of me. Comic Con, guys, for me, is just a blast. I love it, you know. It's like going to another world for me. You know, take it to a fantasy world. Let me get the autograph for you. Now, I met seven acts. The point is, it acted like. Yeah. These are autographs that I have a show. Show, show off. We're talking about the experience. Uh, first, I'll show some pictures of some of the people I take pictures with there. Not people, but cosplayers. Yeah. That was really fun. I took one with Iron Man. <laughs> that was fun. Somebody was dressed up as Robocop and Jason and Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman from Batman Returns, but I didn't get those pictures, sadly. Yeah. But, got a little picture of Iron Man there. Yeah, I had a really cool suit. It is an actual suit, and it was really cool. So I have a picture of And I got a picture of a guy that... <laughs> you see him right here with me. That's Freddy Krueger. <laughs> here. Did a really good job on the mask, too. And if you see me there, I look a little scared. You can't see me barely. <laughs> We're on Batman Mask the Fantastic Show. He kept on bugging me. He kept on, you know, messing with me. I couldn't understand. He's like, I'll be in her nightmare. He's like, I haven't seen all the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. I've only seen the original and what's Wes Craven's Nightmare. I said, and he's like, you need to watch all my movies. And he cut me a little bit. He actually touched me. You see, with the Freddy Krueger's clothes, he actually touched me with it. And I was like, Arr! you know, like I was getting cut. Okay, that was awesome getting cut by Freddy's claws, you know, by Freddy's hand. I'm like, okay, that was awesome. <laughs> and then I told him thanks. <laughs> and then he's still doing his Freddy Krueger's book. Yeah. He was messing with me. He was looking at me, like, trying to scare a little my dad, trying to mess with us. <laughs> you know, busting our balls, like as you could say. <laughs> and it was funny. And then he took the mask off because he said, it's just too damn hot. It was. That's why I didn't wear a jacket there. I know what you're thinking in February, but there it can get really hot. It was almost... It's only 63 degrees in Atlanta. Yeah. Then I take a picture with R2-D2. Yeah, that was awesome. I did touch his head. I'm like, I guess some lady was controlling him. Another picture of me and R2-D2. R2 from Star Wars. Awesome. Sorry if you can't see the picture coming out well, guys. But if you're friends with me on Facebook, you would see it better. Then I got a picture with somebody dressed up as Thanos uh, from Avengers Infinity War. The MCU, Infinity War, and Endgame. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. They, someone was also just as Christian as Batman and Bane from Dark Knight, but I didn't like those. I don't like those versions of the, the characters. That was just me. Somebody was just like Deadpool. Or she got a picture of Deadpool. Then I got a picture of some guy that I saw. They were just as Mando, the Mandalorian as Mando from the Mandalorian, Mandalorian show and Ahsoka. So that was cool. I just you know said, oh Ahsoka too, and she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Took the picture. Sorry. But he was a very tall guy, yeah. They're very nice people. Cool take pictures with them. And then, funny enough, I took a picture with an Ewok from Return of the Jedi. <laughs> we went like this to each other. <laughs> yeah. You know, chip chip. And that's me putting my, I put my hand up too, like the Ewok was. <laughs> I started putting my hand up too in the picture. That was fun. Alright. So that was the cosplayers I met. Now the actors. Now, um, first I met, there were seven people. Um, but, well, there were two people I wanted to meet there. That was Zachary Levi, um, Billy Batson, who played Billy Batson, Shazam, from the Shazam and Fear of the God Shazam. But, he canceled you know, a couple of weeks ago, so I was very excited.
سال می نام برای اینکه تو بزنی چه وقت میگی نیستیم ام تام کیانوف که پلی ورز فلاش ایبار کان دکتر هریسون ویلز یو نو آه فرگت نمیدونم and you know Harry and HR and Sherlock Holmes from in season four you know and the Indiana Jones Harry Wells you know in season five or six whatever it was yeah season six I think it was yeah he wasn't there he he only appeared yesterday only Friday so I was like oh, damn but maybe next year um, I didn't get to, John Ross Davis was there I saw him I wanted to meet him folks but I, I didn't get a chance to Alec Baldwin was there but Now the prices to me, people were expensive. It was like I think sixty dollars for an autograph, or I think sixty for an autograph, and then sixty for another one for a picture. But if you choose to get the combo, it can be eighty or a hundred. I would think so. But for Alec Baldwin, he was there. Um, I saw somebody dressed up as a shadow, by the way. I wish I had a picture with him. Love the shadow character. I'm like that guy's gonna be Alec Baldwin. <laughs> That's, but I was thinking he was just so bad. But Alec Baldwin, it was $200 in total for every price when you get to meet him. I was obviously in $200. I'm, like, I'm not paying $200 to meet Alec Baldwin. You know, look, don't get me wrong. I love him in Beetlejuice. I love The Edge with, with uh, Anthony Hopkins. Those are really good movies. And I love The Shadow. Well, The Shadow is not a great movie, but I love him as The Shadow. He's good. But And as Boss Baby. But I would not want to talk to him. He... His line wasn't very big. He didn't look like a very happy person. But I didn't met him. I just wasn't interested in meeting him. He's just a big actor. And I'm like, uh, just no. No, thank you. Not interested in meeting him. Um, I, I did meet Richard Kern. I'll talk about that a little later. But before I do, uh, Debbie Dunning was there. And she got to say hi to her briefly. Just, just hi. She's walking by, I guess, going to a photo walk or whatever. I don't know. We're going somewhere. I don't know. But she's gorgeous. Not kidding, a very beautiful woman in real life. Very beautiful, just like how he is in Home Improvement. But I didn't get to meet her. It was just again money, and I didn't get. I, I got to meet one actor from Cobra Kai. Last year I met William Zipka, Ralph Macchio, Ralph Macchio, Ralph Macchio, and Martin Cove. But I didn't get. To, it was the kid that was the bully, and Hawk, and uh, Peyton List. Yeah, forget her character's name. But I only met one. Janaya Desento, uh, Dimitri from there, but anyway, I'll get more to that. Anyway, um, yeah, and John R. Davis, I saw Robert Ewing in there, but I didn't get to meet him again. And Michael Rooker was there, I really wanted to meet him. I could have got an autograph, but I also wanted to really get a photo with him. But I looked at the sign that says no photos, so I'm like, no. Honestly, if it comes down to it, I'd rather between an autograph and a photo, I want to get a photo with the actor, you know, it's, it's just something, it's like a great memory that I met this person, and I want to be a smile on my face because I want to have a good experience meeting this person. You know, he's not wanting to take the picture, I'm like, okay, but I would pay for it, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, those are just some people I couldn't meet. But maybe again, maybe next year, there's always another year, you know. They go to other Comic Cons too. So, but anyway, the first person I met was the actor Andy Circus. Yeah, I met Andy Circus. Yeah, we probably know what he looks like. Yeah. Um, again, like I said on the post here, um, y'all know he does motion capture. He played in Lord of the Rings. I think a character named Gollum. I think I've never seen Lord of the Rings, but he played in King Kong. He played. Kong himself and Peter Jackson's King Kong. He also played a character named Mumpy. He played Caesar from Brothers of the Planet of the Apes, Dawn, and uh, Dawn and War. And I love him as Caesar. He's great as doing motion capture. He is fantastic at it. At it. He was Claw from Avengers Age of Ultron and Black Panther. And of course he started after Pennyworth from the Batman, the new Batman movie, The Batman. John Robert Patterson, uh, that which uh, the Reeves, Matt Reeves' first version of Batman, and he was great in that. He doesn't have a lot of screen time. I know he did the Venom with the big carnage, but I'm sorry, that film looks like shit. I, I mean, it's nothing against him, but honestly, I don't care about Venom. I know that probably won't be good. It's nothing against Andy Serkis, but who knows? It might have been Sony really directing that movie to him. But anyway, I did ask him some questions, like how was it to work with 
I just said, hey Andy, how you doing? I'm Levi. Told who I was. And he was a really nice guy. You know, very talkative. A little bit, you know, talking to people. As I'm talking with him. I waited over an hour just to meet him, but it was worth it. Uh, I asked him about Chadwick Bosman. He said he was just a good soul and that, you know, that he was very nice to with the guy. I told him I loved, I loved my Caesars. Thank you. I said, my mom loves you with Caesar too. He said, thank you. You know, I told him how great he is as an actor that he's one of the best and he appreciated it. He looked nice to meet you, Levi. Then we took the picture. He didn't get up on it. That's fine. You know, but it was, it was great to meet him. Andy Serkis is one of the best people I've ever met. He was really nice. Very nice guy. And he gave me the, from my, play, my Dawn of the Apes, which is my favorite of the reboot trilogy, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, you know, Andy Serkis, Caesar. Yep, that's the only map I got. So, I love that picture because I love Donnie Gates. Yeah. So, Andy Circus, his name. Yep, so that was great. Alright. Now, the second person was Carlos Filetis. Yeah, Filetis, I can't say his name right. But if y'all know him, he played Cisco Ramon, aka Vibe, from the Flash 2014 TV series. Which I talked about that show last year on my channel. Uh, yeah, it was great to meet him. You know, here's a picture of me with him. Like I said, I couldn't meet Tom Gavinoff, but I met him and Daniel Pennebaker. But anyway, Carlos first, because I met Carlos first. Because Daniel Pennebaker, I guess she was uh, doing a photo op panel, whatever. I don't know. I don't ask people for certain questions like that. But the time that I met Carlos, though, she she came back, so then I, you know, which, okay, anyway. But Carlos, I talked to him. I mean, he was a very nice guy. He's like, you're Cisco. I'm like, like, man, you're Cisco. He's like, yep, I am. And he's just a cool, a chill dude. He's like Cisco in real life, kind of. He's really funny. He's a cool guy. I told him, was awesome. I told him, Zoom is my favorite villain. I told him that it scared me when Thawne, you know, that I told him how great Tom is as Reverse Flash, you know, when he does the heart, when Cisco finds out that he's Reverse Flash in Season 1, when he's about to crush his heart, I'm like, that was a scary moment. I was like, did he kill Cisco? And I'm like, I told him, how was like to work with Grand Gus? And he's like, Grand's very good to work with. He's very faithful and strong for to, you know, being the Flash. He's very committed to it. And, yeah, he was just a nice guy, a nice, cool guy. I liked really meeting him. He was really cool. And, of course, I got him from as Vibe. He's like, is this really like Cisco... No, call this for this. Let's really buy for me. So, yeah. Yeah, that's all I can remember the question asking, but that's the autograph I got. This is him as a vibe from the Flash TV series. It was cool. And then next, yeah, but call for this. He was very cool. And then I met Danielle Pennebaker. Like I said, she wasn't there at first. I was trying to find her. My goal was to meet her at first, but I didn't meet her at first. I did, you know. She, I, I had to pick one female to meet, and I chose her instead. There was Charisma Carpenter there. I wanted to meet her, but I never seen Buffy the Vampire Slayer or Charming. She did those shows. I've only seen her in the Expendables movies. So the only thing I could talk to her about is the Expendables. I couldn't really get out of her because I never seen Buffy. But I'd share it with show. Debbie Downing, of course, I would have met, but I think she was just giving away calendars. I'm not sure. I'm sure he's getting away at Harvest. I don't want no 24th calendar. I already got my source calendar. I'm proud of that. You know, but I, I just chose one address and I chose her. So, and I really wanted to meet her. Sorry, folks, but I just did. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I was nervous though. But, you know, like I said, when I was in Carlos's line, which was not a big line, and Danielle didn't have one, which is unfair. I think they deserve it. Even if the show became shit later on, I don't blame them. I just blame the directing and writing. It just got worse. Because of the the people behind the show, the the people that had the idea for it just did some bad stuff. I'm like, yeah. But anyway, like I said, she came she came back from doing the photo op. You know, I guess she had like a cute little dog or something. I saw a cute puppy <laughs> that she had, and I got the autograph and a and a picture with her. Yeah, which I'll show the autograph here in a second. But you know, I just went up to her, met her. She's like, hey, how you doing? She wanted that conversation. I I'm I'm talking to. Cat almost got my tongue, you didn't feel well. But I told her that I thought she was a great actress. I told her, I love you, it was Killer Frost. She's like, thank you. You know, she appreciated that. And I talked to her about what on Sky had that I love that movie. Really, I told her it was a relief movie. And I asked her about the late Kelly Preston. She said that Kelly Preston came on 
the Flash TV show, well, not the Flash, but came on set of the Flash TV show just to visit her, I guess, get a picture with her or something like that. So I can assume she was friends with her, but Dana Pantheg was very talkative. Not, not a bad thing. She's, t she's very sweet. She's a sweet lady. She, she's a sweetheart. That's all I can say. She's a very sweetheart, sweet lady, very much smiles, very nice, very polite lady, you know. And I told her she was a pretty lady. I'm like, yeah. I never thought of it, but yeah. But this is the picture I took with her. Yeah, she's taller than me. <laughs> you can probably see in my face I'm a little weird looking because <laughs> I'm nervous. Deep down, I was nervous. I'm like, hey, you're me, me, meeting the one, the most beautiful actresses ever. Yeah, so I get a little nervous, folks. Excuse me, I'm a man, okay? I get a little nervous around women, beautiful women, but that's just me. I, I know, but I just do. But she was a sweetheart. I told her she was a pretty lady, and yeah. And that Scott Howard was great. She got Scott Howard. But I said, I know what you're thinking. I should have to kill a false one. But I, she said, Levi, this is sweet, but she says, Levi, all the best, Danielle Pennebaker. Yep. And this is her as Dr. Caitlin Snow from The Flash. Yeah. Again, she is very adorable. She's really pretty. She's gorgeous. Oh. But I didn't want to be flirty with her or anything like that. But I respect her as a person. Even if it's a lady, I mean, you want to be respectful to that person and treat them like a, per a person. But that's just me. I'm not going to be rude to people or act weird. No. You know, I am I was brought up having manners and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I was a little rude to my dad the other day, you know, when we were on the train. But, no, I'm not really a rude person toward people. You know, when I meet somebody, I'm going to be really nice. You know, I am. I'm a nice guy. Yeah. Sometimes when you get to know me, I can be a little aggravated or impatient. But I'm still a nice person deep down. I'm still a good person deep down. But, yeah, but... They said to Levi, all the best. Daniel Panabaker. So uh, it was funny. It was one of the best experiences ever. Good experience meeting her. She was a sweetheart. Very sweet person. Really good person. I asked her, I, should, I didn't ask her about the Friday 13th the remake. I should have. I did want to tell her that her character should have lived. I could see her character fighting Jason, but that didn't happen. I hate that she got killed off. You know. But maybe she was busy doing the flash or getting ready to do something else. And then next I met Richard Kern. Yeah, he still, somebody did call me, he, uh, called it, well, yeah. yeah, he does look the same, which is fine. Well, what do we can he looks the same, which is okay. I don't expect him to get a face change or anything. Yeah. But I met Richard Kern. He's a really nice guy here. I'll show you the picture of me and him. As you can see, my eyes were closed in case my dad was taking the picture a little fast. It was from my dad's phone. <laughs> oh, yes. Now I'm not going to show that. I'm embarrassed to but I'm doing this. <laughs> and hopefully my dad won't mind, but this is me and my dad and uh, Richard Kern. And I did ask him some questions, too. Debbie Dunning was right there. I should have probably met her, but I didn't. I was going to have a picture with both of them, but it didn't happen. Maybe next year, if she's there, yeah, I'm going to book. Like I said, I just said, hi, did David doing I just said hi, and I said, just to be nice, and I said, hi. I'm like, yep. She's a beautiful lady, no like that, but she's 57. Way too old for me, anyway. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm into older women, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Debbie Dunning is no exception. She is gorgeous. Not kidding. <laughs> Look at her in person, you're seeing a very beautiful woman. <laughs> but, again, I wanted to meet Richard Kern first, because Richard Kern was great. He was Al Borland. I told him that home improvement was part of my childhood. I thanked him for that, too. Thanks for being my part of my childhood. And he's like, he told my dad, he's like, well, your, your dad's smart for that. And he walked show, yeah, of course. <laughs> and I told him my name was Levi. He's like, oh, Levi, just like the pants. He's like, yeah, I wish I owned it. <laughs> I'd be rich right now. He's like, well, you probably won't be able to do much for but or something like he said. But And I said to him, you know, how does I do over Tim Allen? He's like, over Tim. And I said, well, you knew all the tools and stuff when Tim did. And I was like, of course. I knew all the tools. <laughs> More, a lot more, and I knew a lot more than Tim did. <laughs> or she would have asked him more about the show. But he was very popular. He was a very nice guy. A very cool guy. I think he, if you watch game show, you probably know that he does Family Feud. But I basically like him as Al Borland. I think he does a great job of that. This is to Levi. 
Al I can't read the readers here, but it's a picture of him as Al Bourne from Home Improvement. And again, Home Improvement was part of my childhood, so this is like not my nostalgia here. And I thank him for being part of that, because the 90s was a great time, and yeah, it was a nice picture of him saying to me, you're the cool Diego. He was a very cool guy. He's a very nice guy, sweet guy. I definitely recommend meeting him. If you if you love home improvement like I do, definitely meet him. Uh, if you have the money, I suggest meeting Debbie Dunning too. But I just didn't get to meet her. I didn't get to meet all the people I wanted to, but maybe next year I will. If she comes back next year, maybe they will. I'll meet her next. That's definitely my plan. Hmm. But that's but that's Al Roland. That is Richard Kern. Really nice guy. He's kind of like in real life. He's just real nice. Well, no, he's not. But then, funny enough, I just had to meet this guy. Now, I may not be the... Well, uh, yeah, I guess for myself an E.T. fan. Maybe not the biggest E.T. I used to think E.T. is a rare, but... I think about E.T. is a really great movie, and, you know... I met I met Henry, Henry Thomas, who played Elliot. From, he, he played... In, he was an E.T. the extraterrestrial, where he played Elliot. He was the kid that was friends with... You know, and brought him back home. But yeah, that's a picture of me and I don't, of course, he's not kidding anymore, duh. Henry Thomas. <laughs> it was great to meet him. I'm like, well, this guy over Steven Spielberg. I had to meet somebody who worked with Steven Spielberg. You know. No, he didn't, no, he wasn't a close enough for ZT, but again, he was a real nice guy. Really cool guy. I liked meeting him. Cool. Very nice. I asked him a little bit of some questions. I said, how was it like to work with Steven Spielberg? He said, it was great. I was working with him. Steven Spielberg was like almost a kid himself, you know, which I could believe. On screen, he was like a big kid himself, which was cool. I liked hearing that. And I did ask him, do you, you, you know, how was it like to work with Julie Murphy? Well, she was six years old at the time, but he liked working with her when they were kids. I was like, do you speak to her anymore or talk to her anymore? He's like, no. And <laughs> he told me he didn't know. I was like, okay. But, you know, you know, she's all right. And then he put Levi, Levi with a son of be good. <laughs> he put Levi, be good. And it's a picture of him and E.T. when he was a kid, when E.T. was going home. So that was Henry Thomas. It was great to meet another legendary actor. I kind of grew up watching E.T. a little bit. Yeah, he used to in that movie when I was a kid. So a little nostalgia too there for me. But E.T. is a classic. So I definitely got to meet Henry Thomas. Nice guy. Really cool guy. It's nice to meet you, but if you have a good one, then, you know, we part of ways and shook his hand and tell him bye. But he's a nice guy. Okay, before I met this last one, I did not get an autograph from him. Kind of another slightly picture of me and Henry Thomas. But a nice guy to meet. I met I met Sir Anthony Daniels who plays C3PO. I did not get an autograph from him. I didn't have the money. I should have got the money, but I didn't. But anyway, it was nice just to get a photo with him. Now Anthony Daniels, he is C3PO from Star Wars. I think he was in the original movies, the prequel trilogy, and the sequel trilogy. So, and I guess another movie that makes eleven. But I met Sir Anthony Daniels. It was great to meet him. I didn't really get to shake his hand. He was kind of really busy. He just said, okay, you're not getting another Okay, he just told me, you know, stand here, stand here, tell my dad, don't take the picture. Some guy took the picture off my dad's phone. He's like, no, we'll take care of that. He was very observant, Anthony Daniel, but he was very nice. You know, I took a picture with him, smiled. I hate that I couldn't get out of there for him. But yeah, he was a nice guy. And I told him how much I love Star Wars. I said, how, I asked him, how would you like to work with Kate He's like, crazy. Yeah. And then I said, Anthony, Sir Anthony, yeah, it's like Sir Anthony. I told him, thank you for being part of my child. He's like, being a nice smile. He's a very nice guy. I wish I would have got his autograph. Maybe I could speak to him more. Be able to get his friend. I wish I would have got his autograph. I should have. But I just can keep on getting money out. Yeah, I did later on, but it was nice meeting Anthony Daniels. I wish I would have got an autograph. I would regret that. You know, but... Next time if I ever meet him again, I definitely want to get an autograph. Because I need to get an autograph. And a picture, of course, is nice. But yeah, he's just a very observant gentleman. I think he liked to do certain things in a certain way, which I respect. 
I wasn't going to be rude, I was going to be respectful. You know, some people are very observant or, you know, things they want done in a certain way, which I could understand that. I'm that kind of way too. But he wasn't being rude. He was a, he was a nice gentleman. That's okay, I get it. He's probably met Star Wars fans over the years. I'm not going to blast his ear off with Star Wars. I get it. He's met a lot of fans who love my C3PO. And I don't know the C3PO, but it was a great meeting him, though. It was a good experience meeting him personally. At least I got that. But next time, definitely get a hard grip for 3PO. That's 3PO, you know. Then the last person I met was Janiya Desenso. He is from Cobra Guy. His character is Dimitri. Yeah, he was a cool dude. He's very talkative. He's like, if you've seen Cobra Kai, you know, the, the Dimitri character, he's very talkative. You know, so him and Eli, you know, Hawk are good friends. You know, the chemistry together with friends really works. I told him, we should have taken his butt and he said, yeah. I did ask him how it was like to work with Ralph Macchio. He said it was good. He, was, he even said, he told, I told him that I was nervous when I met William Sigler last year. I was nervous to work with him, as we said, and Ralph Macchio. But I kept on here because I had to do certain scenes with them. And I told him, you know what, you guys did a great job with the show. Why, I told him, why you show, why you see shows or movies sometimes don't work, they could suck. I also told him that, that you'll have a great cast, great writing, great direction. You know, y'all did such a great job with the show. I was like, thank you, is what he said. You know, he really appreciated me for saying that. And he talked a little bit. He was just, he was a cool, awesome dude. He was a cool dude. He's very talkative. He will have a conversation with you. He's just a really cool guy. He's cool. He's just awesome. He's a really nice guy. Sweet guy. Very nice. He's very talkative. See, that's what I like. I like an actor. He may not be a big actor, but I like actors who want to have a conversation with you and are going to talk to you, not to ignore you, not rush you off, you know, brush you off. You know. You can at least talk to your fans, at least talk to people. Manners. That's what I'm talking about. Being polite and talking to people. I'm not going to sit there and ignore you. <laughs> But I mentioned that, you know, I said, I felt bad for you and Mark for punch your character in the face. Like, I felt bad for you. He was like, I got the worst, my character gets the worst beating in the beatings in the show. <laughs> Which is true. You do have to feel bad for Dimitri. And like in real life, he, Dimitri is funny. In real life, he is funny. He's a cool guy. He's an awesome guy. I really hope he continues to become a big star. He needs to be a big star. Because he's a good guy, good dude. He's a good actor. And they said that, he said that they're still filming right now, they're filming season six. Or going to, I'm sorry, going to start filming up. And that, uh, he told me, you know, and Ralph was right too, that season six is the last one, that'd be it. But, uh, I'll show you the picture I got with him. We're doing a thumbs up. And we did a bunch of other karate moves. <laughs> just look at his face. So look at him. <laughs> you can see him. He's just, he's just a funny guy, too. He cracked me up. Yeah. See, that's why I like somebody who's cool and relaxed. You know. Next time I'll probably meet Hawk. You know. Peyton West was there, too. She, she's gorgeous. As well. She's gorgeous. You know, too. Just like Debbie Dunning and Darren Bennett-Pager. But I just chose one actress. You know. Again, folks, it's just money and stuff. But yeah, he made the funny face. <laughs> I knew he did thumbs up again. I'm not sure I'm saying doing a picture, but I probably am. And then it just pictures of me in my Halloween shirt on Facebook. I ain't gonna show on here. But yeah, Jim, you know, Jim, Jim tonight, I was thinking Spider Devil and my favorite ones on it, and Daniel Panda Baker, and of course, Henry Thomas. But oh, let me show you the autograph. This is what. Is this the Levi Dimitri? Is this character Dimitri from Cobra Kai? Yeah. Very cool dude, awesome to meet him. It was a good experience. See, that's what I really like. An actor who is, or actress who is going to have a conversation with you, be, be nice to you, 
and want to have a conversation with you. Appreciate. It's called appreciating your fans and loving your fans. I know sometimes it's Saturday, Sunday. They meet a lot of people. They're signing papers all day, signing stuff all day. I get it. You know, they probably talk to you a lot of stuff, but you never want to talk to your fans. you got to love your fans because they're... Without them, you wouldn't have a career. That's the thing. You know, without your fans... You know, the thing is, though, if your film was not successful... Yeah. But that's all the autographs I got. But it was cool to meet you know, I said, I said, a really cool dude. Talk, I talked to him probably the longest, but he was cool. You know, I like an actor that I talked to, but it was really one of the best experiences meeting him. Good experience meeting him. Funny dude, so that's... The, you know, Janai, Janai Desim, the Dimitri. Sign up. And then, Henry Thomas, really nice guy. We like meeting him. Very nice guy. And then again, going over them, showing you them over again. That is Richard Kern. Again, a nice guy. Very cool guy. I like him. Oh, but he's really nice. And of course, Daniel Panavager. She was a sweetheart. I was meeting her. Very gorgeous lady in real life. Very much sweet in real life, too. Very, a very good person. I like to meet her. And Carlos Velez. Velez. Nice person. Really good dude. Cool and funny, too. And very talkative as well. But very... In real life, like Cisco is a cool, funny character. In real life, you know, Carlos is a funny, cool guy. Yeah, and he was perfect for the role of Cisco. And then, of course, Andy Serkis. Awesome dude. <laughs> He signed it, I think, very perfectly in my opinion. But that's all the autographs I got, guys. So, hope you enjoyed that. I had a good experience. Comic Con was fun. I got to see some of the people dressed up and stuff. I bought this Halloween shirt. They had a child's play two jacket. I should have got it. <laughs> you know, and then they had the flash shirt. I should have got one. I don't want to get a flash Maybe next year. But I just saw the Halloween one. I got to get that. But maybe next year the flash or arrow. They had arrow too. But the thing is, I mean, look, I did want to meet Margaret Walker, but I wanted a picture with him. You know, I didn't get the autograph from Anthony Daniels, but it was nice to meet him, so that was, and how that was, what, one, two, three, four, five, and six is Anthony, yeah, so seven. So I got to meet seven people, so maybe this year it could be nine or eight. But I got to, you know, but again, I saw some of those people like Debbie Dunning, uh, John Rice Davis, Michael Rooker, I saw him, uh, Robert Dunlin, I saw him. I've seen some of them, Chris McCarthy, I've seen them. I just I mean, I've only seen the, the two expensive films. That's not really enough. But, you know, I definitely maybe next year I'll meet some people. Yeah, you know, more people. I definitely want to. I, you know, they changed stars. Ron Palmer was there, I didn't really have an interest in meeting him. I wouldn't mind having a help or whatever, but I don't know how he is as a person. Honestly, he doesn't seem like a very tolerable get you kind of person. I would ball one just, I don't know, something strange about him. And Yeah, he shot somebody, so I don't know if I really trust the guy. I'm like, mm, I don't know if it's true. Well, I heard it's true, but I'm like, mm, okay. Maybe he, he, can't, he can't do movies anymore because of his reputation. That accident that happened. Yeah. I guess when you have criminal charges brought up against you, it's kind of hard to do movies. And he's got kids, so I guess he's got to pay the bills, so I guess he's just doing it for the money. But I'm not paying $200 to be an actor. But the thing is, guys, the thing is with the cash there, like I said, it's 60 or 40 sometimes an hour, but for the combo, it's like 80 sometimes 100 That's 100 for both, for both the combo. Clearly, you're just paying $100 each time you're meeting an actor. So I spent like, like $600, I think, today. I spent quite a bit of money. I'm like, but it's not like I'm going to go to Atlanta every weekend. Hell, hell no. I'm glad this is just one time a year. It's worth it. And again, if this case comes back next year, I definitely want to meet Peyton Liz, uh, you know, and Hawk, you know, Jacob Perman. Definitely want to meet him. And I'll meet Debbie Downey at the Robert Union one. Probably meet him. And John Lewis Davis. I definitely want to meet them next time I go there. So it's just hard to meet everybody because, you know, at Comic-Con, the money is for that. I hate cash. I wish they would just do a credit card. Why well, do cash? Oh, well, the train was okay to ride. They were just no talking. Nobody was talking to you this year, so thank God. And went up to the ATM. My dad was helping me with ATM. I'm not really the best person on money, but I'm learning. Um, we went to the ATM, 
And somebody spit on an ATM. My dad almost touched that spit. I'm like, Ugh. We were telling other people, please don't touch that. It was disgusting. I mean, are you kidding me? What kind of people do that? What kind of person are you if you're going to spit on an ATM? I'm like, you're in a public place and you're going to spit on something. What's wrong with you? That's disgusting. Oh, and I almost got run. Someone tried to kill me just being on the road, literally. I driving home from work. Got checkers to eat. Don't know what terminal three checkers, but anyway, did that. Some guy is looking out the window at me, ah, 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 you know, screaming like a lunatic. And almost the idiot hits me. I'm like, I beat the hunters, and someone flipped him off too. But I didn't. But the second person, the second per first person was a crazy old man speaking horn at me like a nut. People are crazy. I'm like, and then he's driving. You shouldn't tailgate people because you can close rail like that. And you're, if you don't turn your signal, he's not turning it, he's not turning his signal on. Now, if you know if you're going to turn or turn to the lanes, you have to turn your signal on when you drive. And you can't drive two, you cannot drive two lanes. <laughs> this guy's driving two lanes. He's driving like a crazy person. He's nuts. It's those people I stay away from. Don't drive, do you yourself a favor, folks? If you drive a car, please stay away from nuts. Just be safe, a driver. Don't be in a rush. Don't be like that guy. Don't be, ah, ah, you know, yelling out the window. Don't be a crazy person because if you're like that, you're crazy. And somebody like that is going to get somebody killed one day. One day he's going to kill. Yeah, remember, when you drive, it's your life out there, okay? Everybody's going to have a mama, a daddy, family, and you don't want to have to look at that family one day and say, I'm sorry I killed your your wife or son daughter. You don't know. They could have a newborn baby, and they're not going to grow up as a, being a parent, being a mother or a father. Because you took that away from a person, so you're definitely taking someone's love away when you're driving crazy. You got to think. You got to be a safe driver out there. Go about the law. I know I get a little patient too, but I'm not going to jump out. It's just not worth dying for. Let me tell you something. I don't care what you're driving to work. I'd rather be late for work than be fired. I'd rather be fired from work than be dead on a gurney. That's just me. If you want to rush and just be crazy to get some art, no. It's not worth it. Don't do anything crazy. Don't do anything stupid. Don't be a stupid driver. Please be a safe driver. Don't be like that guy trying to wreck people off the road. Please, folks. Don't do something crazy. Drive like a common sense person. Have common sense. Don't get anybody killed. Don't be stupid. You know, because people like that don't need a license. If you're going to be like that, don't have a license. Oh, and the school zone? Don't drive fast in school zone. I don't care if you're in a rush or what. It's the law, folks. If you don't like that, then don't drive. If you can't be patient, please, for the love of God, for the sake of people like me that are safe drivers, get off the road. Get, go walk. <laughs> or get somebody to drive you. Because you are dangerous. Because people are dangerous. <laughs> you're going to kill somebody <laughs> driving like that. And if you don't care, then shame on you for not caring. You're a terrible person. You're, people are terrible if they don't care. Yeah, that's what I think. But anyway, guys, not for anything about that. People are stupid. You know, sometimes people are just dumb. But a person is smart, but people are dumb. But anyway, guys, Comic Con was fun. I hope you enjoyed my Pickup 59 video and my experience at Atlanta Comic Con. It, convention, it was fun this year. I had fun. I wish I met more people. I wish I took pictures with the. Uh, the Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman cosplayers or uh, Jason or Robocop so Robocop again I take a picture of one Robocop so we're not too disappointed with that but it was awesome still you guys took a picture with Eve with an Ewok and R2-D2 so that was awesome and Mando and Ahsoka that was awesome and Freddy Krueger Jason I wish I got Jason but it was definitely awesome it was a lot of fun I enjoyed it but anyway, guys, Comic Con was good. All these other graphs are awesome. I'll put them over there with other graphs. I guess you guys Last year, I just met five people. And I remember, too, it was uh, Butch Patrick, uh, William Zipka, Martin Poe, Ralph Macchio, and Paul Shore. Five people. But this year, I got to meet seven people. I just didn't get that autograph from Anthony Daz, but that's okay. If I did, I maybe would have a bit more conversation with him. But that's on me. I should have just got, them, got money out of ATM. But yeah, person spinning on it is just disgusting. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned. 
Tomorrow, I don't know if I'll do a review of Iron Cube, guys. I'm thinking about it, maybe. It's just a maybe. Not gonna say for sure. But, uh, I might do that. Yeah. So, guys, stay tuned for tomorrow for my next superhero review. Hopefully, tomorrow I can do it. I want to. I shall hopefully do this. I, I, I'm, I'm in the mood to do reviews. It's, you know, getting more, you know, because I love doing this channel. So, anyway, guys, hopefully tomorrow, stay tuned as I soar into it, as we get into it, as we get ready to soar and fly to review the Rocketeer. So, stay tuned for this review tomorrow, guys. Hope you enjoy this video. Let me know in the comments down below. Have you met any of these people? And have you been to a Comic Con? And what is your experience at Comic Con? You love going to Comic Con. You know, if you're a nerd like me, you would love to go. But I got some good autographs, great autographs, and some great people. So it was awesome. It was a fucking fun day. <laughs> Excuse my language. <laughs> it was an awesome day. Best day ever. I just love Comic Con. It's like going to a better world, an escapism world, a fantasy world that I like living in. But, but eventually, yeah, I live in the real world, sadly. But yeah. Proud to be a nerd, and I'm proud of it. Not ashamed of it. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Hope you like my Halloween shirt. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned as we as we will soar and fly into the rocketry review. So see you. Bye bye. We're gonna really take off with that one. Bye.